Well, good morning to you. Bless you. So we'll be, uh, if you guys want to get your Bibles ready, we'll be in Matthew chapter 13 this morning. Uh, just a f- couple verses, we'll read that here in a minute. Uh, first, I want to tell you a little story. So, I want to tell you a story about uh, a pearl. Right? It wasn't an easy journey for him. It all started about three years ago inside a dark shell of an oyster. One day, something really started bothering this oyster, like really bothering it, and it would not stop. It was so irritating, and as much as the oyster tried to get rid of this irritant, the more it seemed to bother him, until it got trapped in the oyster. And the oyster did the only thing that it knew to do to protect itself. It spit. It spit on it. A lot. For years. All the time. It spit on this irritant. Until the irritant got many, many layers of oyster spit on it. As this spit began to harden, the irritant formed into a beautiful pearl. And then one day, this oyster gets lifted out of the water by a man who opens it and finds this pearl. He's pumped because he knows its great value. He put down everything he had and desired above all else to focus and put all his effort toward this pearl. He had to have it. And went to great lengths, whatever length possible, to get it. He had to deny himself and all that he had. He was all in for this pearl. And when he did that, the pearl was his. Even though he denied everything to get this pearl, it was all worth it because he had this pearl of great value. Do you see two struggles in that story? If you didn't, I'll let you know what they are. The struggle of the oyster when the irritant came in, right? And there was a struggle uh, from the man to get the pearl. But actually, there's a third struggle that I want to let you know about as well. The struggle of the pearl accepting the worth and praise that the man is placing on it. While different people are experiencing uh, all kinds of struggles, they are very real. And to go a bit further, Um, each person's struggle might look a bit different. Some are positive struggles, while other ones are negative ones. So, in this scenario, who is actually struggling, and what's their struggle? You're probably wondering. So God struggles for us. right? He struggles for us to protect us and to preserve us from harm. Just as the oyster seeks protection by taking what was meant for harm and turning it into good, so God turns that irritant of sin that we are. And with much care and nurturing, he turns us into a sought-after pearl. Jesus struggles too, through all that he would have to do to get us, but also strives to pursue us. Just as the merchant finds the pearl of great value and gives up everything to get that pearl, we struggle to accept the pursuit and the protection we experience from being the sought-after pearl, at times maybe. So we see God struggle, or maybe we use another word for that. God battles for us. Use the same words, uh, the battle is a struggle. Battles for us from the evil one. We see Jesus struggle, 
or strive for purchasing us and to get a hold of us. And we struggle or attempt to accept the worth that we're told that we have. And I want those three words, battle, strive, and attempt, uh, which all describe a type of struggle to be a base for our time together this morning. So if you haven't turned there already, Matthew 13 is where we're at. Uh, Just a couple verses. uh, The awesome parable of the pearl of great value found in verse 45 and 46. Matthew chapter 13 Verses 45 and 46. I'll wait till you're there since it's only two verses. I don't want to read it and then you get there and we're done. (laughs) Here we go. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. I love the fact that when Jesus talks about the kingdom of heaven, which he does in this parable and other parables as well, he doesn't just talk about it in a singular kind of way. I love that the kingdom of heaven is comprised of many things that shed light on what Jesus thinks of us, what he has prepared for us, and how much he cares about us. I especially love how the kingdom of heaven is described in this parable. Because this parable that Jesus is telling is being told in the greatest love story ever. And I believe that he's speaking directly to us and he's speaking about us. In this parable, uh, Jesus is represented as the merchant and we are the pearl for our time together. If you read other commentaries, they may have different spins on it. But for our time together, Um, wants to focus on Jesus being the merchant and us being that pearl of great value. And what do you see the merchant doing in this parable? He's seeking, right? He's seeking for pearls, for fine pearls. And when you are found, everything was given up for you to purchase you. Everyone was given up to purchase you. What an amazing feeling to know that you have been pursued, you've been purchased with everything that one has, and it was all done by choice, by a fierce desire for you. But as we said before, there are some struggles that went along with that purchase, right? God battles for us. Let's remember back to the beginning of today's message with the journey of the pearl. If you remember... It was a very hard journey and a very long journey to get to the point of being a valuable pearl. There are years involved. There are irritants involved. I don't like to be irritated. And there is spit involved. (laughs) Yet, uh, what the oyster, what God does to protect the pearl is amazing. The oyster secretes this type of liquid that coats the irritant for protection. And that liquid, given enough time and enough of it, turns it into a pearl. And the best, most true thing that I can compare this process to is um, in a passage in Genesis, Genesis 50, where Joseph has revealed himself to his brothers. What's he say? What you intended for harm God used for good. Imagine that irritant is us. I'm not assuming that you're an irritant, but just imagine for a minute. We come into this world as a sinful people. We're an irritant in God's world. God loves us so much that he protects us with his grace. This grace that goes before us, while we didn't even know we needed grace, we're being pursued by him even in our sin. 
And as we continually get coated with this layer upon layer upon layer of grace, um, we are being drawn in by God. What Satan thought would be a devastating blow to God's plan, God used it for an amazing good. The amazing thing is that any irritant that God allows to work on them becomes a valuable pearl, no matter what it looks like. But a scripture says, the battle isn't between flesh and blood, but between principalities and powers. God's fighting for us in this eternal battle of our soul. From the very beginning, Satan wanted to be in control. And when God didn't allow that, well, you know what happened. He rebelled, right? The sole purpose, his sole purpose, was to destroy God's greatest creation any way that he could. But as much as Satan wanted to destroy us, God wanted to save us many more times over. God wages war on Satan for our souls. Even though we have a choice to go one way or another, God still pursues you. He pours grace over us, over you. He gives you mercy. We can rest assured that God will always be for us and not be against us. And he never slumbers or sleeps in his protection for us. His desire is for us to come into a loving, saving relationship with him. And he's willing to go to the greatest extreme to make that happen. Which brings us to our next point. Jesus strives for us. Jesus strives for us. This is where our passage for today really comes into play. We know that the merchant was searching for a fine pearl. There's not a specific description of how the pearl needs to look that the merchant's looking for. But the word that's used in the Greek language for fine, the word fine, actually means beautiful, useful, or genuine. And that's way broader. That's way broader of a definition than I typically think of when I think of a merchant looking for fine pearls, right? My mind, and maybe yours too, goes directly to he's looking for a flawless pearl. He's looking for a, a perfect one, right? But really, he's looking for one that meets his standards. We meet his standards. We know Jesus is represented by the merchant, and when he seeks us out, we know for sure that he's not looking for perfection. If you know me at all, he's definitely not looking for perfection. And we're far from it. But we're precious to him. If we're perfect, we wouldn't need a savior. We wouldn't need someone seeking us out. But everyone needs them. People that are beautiful clay uh, that can be molded and crafted into an image of God. And the great news is that all of us are fine pearls and we're all being sought after by Jesus. And when he found it, he sold all he had and bought that pearl. When Jesus found a pearl of great value, he went to the greatest length and gave up everything for that pearl. In the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he prayed, probably more fervently than he ever had, so much so that sweat drops of blood uh, came from his brow. He knew what was looming uh, at the end of that week, and he knew that that night was the beginning of it. He prayed that if there was another way that these pearls could be purchased, please let it be so. But if not, your will be done. And we know that the only way that Jesus 
The, the only way was that Jesus would need to be sacrificed on the cross on our behalf. His shed blood would be the payment needed for salvation of our souls. In the beginning, God created us to be with him, and he desires us to be with him. But our sin separates us from God. We all have a sin problem, and it has to be remedied. But our sins can't be removed by our good deeds. No matter how much good we do, no matter how much we try, we can't remove our sin ourselves. There's only one way to remove sin. Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins. The once and for all sacrifice gave up his life for us so that we could be offered eternal life. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will have eternal life. We must ask, though, for forgiveness and seek to follow him for the rest of our lives. When we do, life with Jesus starts now and lasts forever. We begin our new life, and we follow him. This morning, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, um, I want you to know that you can. Or if it's not at the spot that you want it to be, it can be at the spot that you want it to be, uh, that Jesus wants it to be. If that describes you this morning, I want you to take that step, and I want you to pray this prayer after me. Let's all bow our heads and pray uh, this prayer, especially if you want to ask Jesus into your life. Father God, I know that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you died and rose again for me. Please forgive me for all of my sins and come into my life and reside. Help me to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, especially for the first time, there's a celebration going on in your honor, in heaven. And I celebrate with you as well. Uh, you can consider yourself a child of God this morning if you prayed that prayer. One step that I would encourage you to take is you need to find someone this morning to tell the decision that you've made. That's a super important step, and I want you to do that this morning. That plays into our final struggle that I'd like to talk about this morning. We attempt to accept the victory and the worthiness we're given, or that we are. As people on the receiving end of all of this love and all of this care, we have a responsibility to accept that worthiness and victory we're given. That irritant inside uh, the, the, the oyster was meant uh, to do harm to it, right? Right? But the oyster went into protection mode, battling for us, and the result was a great pearl who was seen to have great value. We all are people of great value in the eyes of Jesus, and he strives to get us because he wants us to be his. He would do everything all over, over again for you, but we're also in a struggle we're attempting to accept that there is someone who would go to that extent for us that Jesus did. Many of us can't comprehend that. And some of us have a very hard time accepting that. And thankfully, some of us have accepted it and love it and are so thankful for it. And I'm so thankful for it as well. But there's some that may find that very hard. The fact is, is that it's already been done. The work has already been done. You've already been paid for by the shed blood of Jesus on the cross. This parable is letting you know that what has already taken place and the value 
placed on you by Jesus. He's letting you know your value. And a unique thing that Jesus gives us is choice. We aren't forced into a relationship with Jesus. That wouldn't be genuine. And honestly, it would be bad all around, probably. We would have a pseudo kind of love for him. But what we are given is grace through our whole life that guides us into a genuine relationship with him. When that grace was poured onto us, even when we were sinners, it's gently guiding us into a relationship with him. Maybe this is the first time you heard the good news of the gospel. Maybe it's your hundredth time. I don't know. Regardless, it's there for you to accept. If you're struggling with this good news, maybe there's a reason. Maybe you had some less than ideal experiences in church and has really turned you off to Jesus. Maybe some really hard stuff has taken place in your life and you can't quite wrap your mind around why a loving God would allow that to happen to you. Maybe you've allowed Satan's voice to be a louder in your life than God's voice. I've said that in my life a lot, and that has something I've allowed to happen. To the point that I've started to believe the lies over the truth. It's taken many people praying, tears, Humility and all kinds of hard conversations to allow truth to prevail. And you know what? I'm still on that journey. If any of those or maybe others resemble you, um, you need to know what's true. And I want you to know that you are worthy to be pursued. You're worthy to be pursued by Jesus, you're worthy to be purchased. You're worthy to accept his love. The message has been, is, and will always be the same. There is a God who loves you, is pursuing you, and wants to be in a relationship with you. But I want to give you a challenge this morning. I want to challenge you to view yourself as this pearl of great value. Because you are. But I want you to view yourself as that. This pearl who God is battling for and who he's protecting. This pearl who Jesus is striving for and gave everything up for. I want to challenge you to take the next step in your acceptance of your worthiness. Whether that's coming to a saving relationship uh, of Jesus, or just diving deeper into your acceptance of your worthiness, God desires everyone to come to repentance. And he views you, regardless of what you have done or where you stand, as a pearl of great value. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word and for helping us to see the value that you place on us. Not only that, but to the, the extent that you go to help us to see our value, to capture us and captivate us and love us. God, I pray that you would infuse that into everyone's life and heart this morning. I love you and praise you. We ask this in your son's name. Amen.